<laughs> ah, right. Your message is your art. Your message is your art. That's what it is. That's what the art is. And, uh, it, it, you know, it, 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 it was... Paying attention to what's going on in the world can sometimes be hard to do because there's just so many things that make you feel bad. And uh, and I don't like feeling bad. It's just, I, I don't, I like feeling good. That's what I like. <laughs> so, uh, so you know, I, I and, and, but sometimes you feel like I wish that I could make a difference. And, and I feel like in the last few years, there have been so many things. I'm not going to list them all. Uh, some are going to be important to many of us. Some are going to be important to some of us. We're not all going to think the same ones are important. It doesn't really matter to me. But, uh, you know, as I'm watching what's going on in Europe and Ukraine with Russia and all that stuff, and I'm just thinking, like, you know, how do we make a difference in the world, whether it's about this particular topic or about anything that we care about, you know? Uh, and it made me think about, you know, some of the stuff that I've done with Planet Bonehead trying to make a difference for the environment. And, and do I really make a difference? I, I, I don't know because I don't get a report from the globe telling me like, uh, oh, here's the difference you've made. I don't get that. So, you know, I should get that report. That would be a really cool report to get. Uh, I wonder who to talk to about that. But, you know, I, I feel like I've been thinking about this and, I, and, and, and it dawned on me that uh, sometimes we want to make a difference in the world. We want to share a message or, or lift, be inspiring or be an uplifter, you know, as Abraham says. And, uh, and, and, and I think that what holds us back is a belief for many of us that we don't have the ability to do that. That uh, unless I can be like the president of something and uh, like the, the the country and say like you know we're doing this and then everybody goes and then then like oh we can really see it. It almost feels like we're all inconsequential and uh, and I don't believe that's true. And so, uh, but you can feel small. You can feel powerless at times, especially when the events of the world seem so big and. Big! I mean, like, big! What are you supposed to do about that, you know? So, uh, I have three things to say about this, and here they are. Number one is, the, the first thing to remember is that anything that you want to say, um, any, anything that you feel is your uh, message to the world, uh, your job is not to figure out how big or small it is. That's not your job. Your message comes from source. That's what it is. It comes from the universe. So there's nothing bigger than that, first of all. There's nothing bigger than that. And uh, and so you just have to remember that it's not your job to figure out, uh, you know, what effect is my message going to have and am I going to make this result happen or that result happen because we could drive ourselves nuts doing that kind of stuff. All our job is, is to kind of tap into our own source or soul or God or whatever word you like, tap into that energy and let the message come out from us. What's dinging? Uh, something dinged. Anyway, let the message come out. You know, we, it, that's our job is just to let that message out, not to figure out the result that it's going to have or the effect that it's going to have. We don't have the ability to make the effect happen to make the result happen. What we have is the ability to feel the message and then go, blah, 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 here it is. That's my message, that's it. And for me, personally, it comes in, out through music, it comes out through uh, my, my videos and my shows, it comes out from doing this. Which leads me to number two, is the best way to convey that message for most of us here in this group, not for every, I sound hollow? What do you mean I sound hollow? What does that mean? Hello. Um, hello. <laughs> uh, I, I don't know what to do about that. Uh, everything looks right. I, I don't see anything to fix. I don't know. Anyway, uh, it could be your speakers. I don't know. Does anyone else think I sound hollow? The best way, this is number two, the best way to, uh, to put your message out there is through our art. 
right? I mean, honestly, that for, for most of us, the way that we put our message out there is our art, whether that's written word or, or drawings or paintings or sculptures or, or movement or, or things that we create that, you know, tangibly, or digital things, whatever your art is. For a lot of us, that's the best way to tap in and then express it, right? So, one of the things that I know many of us suffer from, and not just artists, but people in general, is that it, it almost feels sometimes that, like, uh, I'm not good enough to, 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 to put something out there, or I'm not, I'm not special enough, or I'm not, uh, I'm not enough, you know? And, and so, if number one is your message is what comes through you from source, the universe, and the best way for you to to uh, convey that message is through your art, then how on earth is it possible that that has no value? Because it's literally the universe saying, hey, I want to I wanna send this message through your art. Here it is, and you go, this is terrible. And the universe is like, what are you talking about, idiot? It's not terrible, it's amazing. And because we, we look at other people's things, we look at the stuff that other people are doing in the world and we're constantly comparing, I can't do that and I can't do that and he had that result and she had that result and I can't have that result. None of that's important. What's important is tapping into your own inner message, your own inner feelings and conveying that through your art. And so that's what number three is, is that of course it's special, of course it has value, of course it's important. Your message is your art. It's you, your source. You're tapping into the universe and bringing it to the world through your art. What could possibly be more valuable than that? What could possibly have more of a positive effect, ripple effect in the world than that? Nothing, nothing could. So if you're sitting there looking at the world saying like, how can I help? How can I make a difference? Sure, you can do the things, you can make phone calls, you can send money, you can pick up a gun and run over there and fight if you want. I don't know, whatever you feel called to. But what could possibly be more powerful than tapping into your own inner being's message and saying, this, I need to show you guys this. You don't know who's going to see that and what that is going to affect down the road. You have no idea. We can't control that. <sighs> be cool if we could, but we can't. So we don't. Anyway, that's that. Uh, that's my uh, spiel for today. I see some messages, but it doesn't look like we uh, had a lot going on today. I don't know. Facebook user says, hey, hey. Facebook user, who's that? I don't know who that is. It's Danielle. Danielle, hi. How are you? Nice to see you. Uh, Danielle, we got to click the link again. I know. I, I know. I don't like clicking the link either. Actually, I don't have to click the link because I, 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 I'm me. Uh, if I type a comment, I don't. I know it's me. I don't need to click the link. Um, but you do. So hmm, do it. Uh, if you don't mind. Anyway, Mikey says, well then, I'll have to write a long message so you can see my profile pic bigger. There you go, it's a little bit bigger, but uh, but not much. I could expand it, but then they'd all be bigger and that's just annoying to me. Uh, Nathan says, hello, but hey Bobby, hello everyone. Didn't you say hello already? No, you didn't say hello already. already. Uh, hello, Nathan, how are you? Nice to see you, buddy. Uh, Barbara is here, hey Barbara. I gotta run, but hi, so you're probably not here. So, uh, and I don't know what it's all about today. However, the title made me think this. I recently switched to all stainless steel for my jewelry. This is my message, strength, resilience, love, sending love to you all. That's interesting. Uh, so, so you know, you, you felt that, uh, I don't know if you decided to switch to stainless steel because, you know, like, uh, I want to try that or it's cheaper or whatever, but you kind of correlated it to a message that this is a stronger material and now I'm, I'm making things that sort of Im imbue, evoke, strength you know uh, I like that so so now you make things and you share them you sell them you do whatever with them you have no idea how that ripple effect is going to uh, affect other people and wh 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 where that strength is going to show itself in the world 
You have no idea. All you know is that it came from your source and came through you, through this thing that you made, and now it moves on into the world. It's none of your business how it affects the world, except for you to know that every time you're doing that, you are sending positive energy out into the world, and that is how you help. That is how you make change happen. You sound hollow. Okay, I don't know what to do about that. Uh, I'll listen back. I'm not sure. Uh, amen, Bobby. I said something right. I don't know what I said. Uh, <laughs> races, hugs. Thank you. Uh, Melinda. Thanks, Bobby Donahue. You're welcome, Melinda Baum. Uh, as I try to figure out this whole documentary thing, uh, what'd you do? Uh, tag me and it did my full name here because it doesn't it doesn't show that. It just looks like you were very formal, um, but I'm sure that's not what you meant. Uh, thanks, Bobby, as I try to figure out this whole documentary thing. Yeah, right? I can imagine you're making a documentary and, you, and, you, and you're putting so much emphasis on yourself. I'm just going to use you as a hypothetical example because I don't really know what you mean by that, but I kind of think I know what you mean. You're making a documentary. Let's say you're a documentary filmmaker named Melinda. Let's just assume these things. Uh, and, and you're thinking to yourself, uh, I don't, you know, I, I would like for this to have this effect in the world, right? I want, a lot of people make documentaries and things like that because they want people to understand an issue so that they will then affect a change. Well, if people understood that this crap was going on, maybe they would do this differently and then this crap wouldn't happen anymore. You know, like that kind of a thing. And I know firsthand what you're talking about, what I'm talking about for you, because you're not here to say it, so I'm just saying it, imagining that this is what you would say. Uh, but when I would make the Planet Bonehead documentaries, that was the idea. If only kids knew about this stuff, they'd grow up and not be idiots like all the adults around here who just do everything stupid. That's my thinking. But I don't know that that's what's going to happen, and that's not even my job to make happen. I don't have the ability to make that happen. All I have the ability to do is tap into what I'm feeling, what's coming through me, and saying, I need to show you this, and I'm putting this out in the world, and now I'm going to trust that the universe knows what it's doing. I don't know why I did this. And that the universe knows what it's doing and will uh, make sure that this gets uh, in front of the right eyeballs. So, Melinda, you just make the documentary that comes from your heart and not worry about if it's going to have the effect that you need it to have. You don't know that it will or it won't, and there's no way for you to do anything other than make something amazing. Ray, and you sound like you're in a cave. Hmm. I don't know, I don't know what to do about that. I'll listen back, I'll see. Maybe I got something messed up here and I don't know it. No, the microphone's space. everything's the same. Cause and effect. What did I say? I don't remember. Okay, cause and effect. Uh, I love to, well, all right, well, maybe this is what you mean, cause and effect. Uh, I, I, I am tapping into my energy and I'm putting something out there through my art and that will have an effect. So I am the cause, is that what you're saying? But what I'm not is the effect. I'm not the effect. I can't determine the effect. I can't predetermine the effect. I can't, I can't dictate the effect. I can't. I don't have that ability. And I think that that, Inability is what drives us nuts. We feel like, well, I made this thing and, I, and it didn't work or it didn't have this effect or I don't know if it had this effect or I wasn't able to get it out to enough people to have this effect, so I suck. I failed. No, you didn't. You made the thing. You have no idea who is going to see that thing later and, 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 and have a bigger effect than you could have even imagined. You have no idea. None. None whatsoever. Your art doesn't belong to you. Once you put it out into the world, it belongs to the universe. Let's go with that for a second. And, right? and, uh, and, and, and you don't know who's going to see it or hear it or watch it or listen to it or do whatever with it. You don't know. You can try to make people look at it and stuff like that, but, but really, it could be seen long after you're gone. You know? It could be seen or watched or whatever long after you're gone and, and have an effect then. So what, because it, the effect didn't happen uh, um, five minutes after you made it, you're a failure? But what if it happened 50 years after you passed? You know, uh, are you still a failure? <laughs> we, we consider ourselves failures because we perceive that we failed at a thing that we have no ability to control in the first place. I love tapping into that energy, says Hector. See what I mean by the picture gets bigger? 
how big that is. I love tapping into that energy. Sometimes, though, uh, too many ideas come at me. That's what drives me crazy. I want to share these beautiful messages with everyone. You know, that's an interesting... Uh, that's an interesting thing is when you've got too many ideas, I think then what we're doing is we're trying so hard to figure out how to convey this message to get the effect that we want that I have so many ideas of how to do it and we feel this time constraint like I don't have enough time to get all these things out there or I don't have uh, the ability to do all of these things at once. It doesn't matter when you do them. It doesn't matter. You just just pick one because whatever the effect that you're trying to get, maybe maybe your source knows that too, and and can just be like, okay, so you're picking that project. Great, let's work on that one first. And I, I because I'm the universe, I will now align everything so that this has the effect that you want. You're not going to even know about it. It doesn't matter whether you did that project or that project or that project. It doesn't matter. Just do the one you feel like. Yeah, I did. <laughs> I don't know what you did. <laughs> I forgot. Rochelle's here. Hi. Uh, late, but I'm here. Well, uh, welcome. Welcome to Daily Fuel. And my hugs have come back to me in interesting ways. Yeah. Touching places I never expected. And it's nice to know that it has shown a light somewhere. Right? Exactly. You just don't know. And sometimes, like you said, it could, it could be coming back to you from places you never expected. That's amazing, you know? So, so what is that? What, what if it comes back to you in ways you never expected, but you don't see it because you're so focused on the way you did expect not happening that you feel like a failure or you feel like you don't know what you're doing or you feel like you suck at this. But meanwhile, the universe is trying to show you the effect that you had all these different ways, but you're closed off to those ways. At least, Ray, you're not. You're, 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 you know you're putting your energy out there and it's coming back to you and you're open to how it can come back to you. So, uh, good for you. I'm going to take a drink of water. While people walk over my head. Oh, Hector. Right now... The universe has me working on three projects simultaneously. That part is fun. Inspiration has me jumping from one to the other. That's pretty cool. Uh, I'm going through something similar. I'm going to talk about it more on Thursday. If you didn't see, I put an event in the group. On Thursday, I'm doing Daily Fuel. It's going to be a special Daily Fuel. So if you can make it on Thursday, I'd really appreciate it. I'd like to have uh, a, a large live audience for the Thursday one, if you guys can, can be there. But... Uh, the reason I mention it now is because of what you just wrote. That be, uh, Because I'm putting something out there that's got multiple projects at once. Because I realized I don't want to just put this thing out there because then I feel like, well, now I have to do this thing every day for the rest of my life. And I get bored. I, I don't want to work on that. I want to go from this one to this one to this one and back to that one and then over to this one again and then this one. And look at this one. I, uh, this one's new. And I want to do that. So uh, you're working on three projects simultaneously if we can understand that that is fun and for some of us that's part of the deal is that we're not supposed to work on one thing at a time I'm not built that way so uh, good for you good for you some people are built that way they have to do one thing regimented until it's finished and then move on to the next and that is also okay I think the idea is just figure out what works for you and do that that is true, says Melinda. I just hope I can make it amazing in the end. Uh, yeah, back to your documentary. You will. Just just make it so that you're happy with it. That That's the best advice I can give you, is make it so that you're happy with it, because people who are like you are also going to like it, and that's that. What else can you do? You know, uh, you're always going to look at a piece of work that you've done and uh, and next year realize, wow, I could have done that so much better if I did it this way. Or I've learned these new techniques. Or now I'm using this software. Or now I have this camera. Or now I have this brush. Or uh, whatever. You're always going to be like, oh my God, I wish I could do that again now. You know, I look at some of the work that I've done, my Planet Bonehead stuff and some of my other um, pieces, and I'm just like, I'm so much better at it now, you know? But... but that's growth. That's what that's all about. So you, you make something, it flows through you the way it flows through you at the time. Next year, next week, next month, next hour, you're going to feel it differently and you're going to make something differently. That's what it's all about. Heart. I know what that means. And Karina is here. Hi. How you doing? 
we feel this time constraint. Did I say that? I don't know. This, I think it's more than my, I think it's more that my soul knows, I can't read, uh, this, I think it's more that my soul knows how much time was wasted, uh, and that makes time feel heavier. Uh, hmm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, fl I'm gonna rearrange your words, okay? I know the sentiment you're going for, and I'm not going to say no, uh, but I'm going to rewrite it for you, okay? Uh, your soul knows how much time was wasted, no, your soul doesn't. <laughs> I just said I wasn't going to do that, and I did it. Uh, no, I don't. I don't think that our soul looks at time as something that gets wasted or anything. Your soul is not looking at you, going like, "Oh my God, this girl! Holy cow, you're X number of years old now, and you could have been so much further along. Why couldn't you be more like it?" That's what our friends and family and parents and whatever say. You know what I mean? Uh, your soul doesn't say that. Your soul is like, oh, you ready to do this now? Great, let's go. You could be 99 years old and have like five minutes left. And your soul's like, oh, you ready to do that now? Let's go. doesn't matter. Time doesn't exist to the universe. That's, that, 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 that's a human construct. That's a, we, we feel like we have this limited time. We are eternal beings. There is no wasted time. Nothing. Nothing. None. So you didn't waste any time. Uh, we feel this time constraint, but now I'm not saying we don't feel it because we do. We human beings feel this time constraint. You know, I wish that I, that I was doing what I'm doing now 10, 20 years ago, right? Does it, I wish that I was. And I look back at things that I was doing uh, literally 12 years ago and it was this, but guess what? It wasn't as good as what I'm making now. You know why? Because I wasn't ready yet. I wasn't up to, I wasn't me yet. I was that guy. And that guy didn't know how to be me. I had more awesome to get to. That's, that's all. That's all. You just had more awesome to become. Now you are. Hooray. It was that a waste of time. You got more awesome. No, that's never a waste of time. Now you're this awesome. Guess what? You're not ready to be as awesome as you will be in five years. So is that your fault? Of course not. Right? It's like looking at a little kid and being like, why can't you drive a car yet? Because I'm six. I don't know how. I can't even reach the pedals. We don't expect little kids to do adult things, you know? So why do we expect, well, now that I'm an adult, I should just be able to do everything that I'll ever be able to do as an adult uh, perfectly now. No, we're constantly growing up. We're constantly getting older. We're constantly getting wiser. We're constantly learning new skills. It never ends. Breathe when you need it. I'm, uh, I'm doing okay. I'm good. Mikey. Inspiration comes how it comes. Sometimes in waves there are four or five ideas that need expansion. Yeah. Uh, sometimes one work takes forever because it needs to evolve. The timing is always right. Yeah, you know what? I feel that way too. I, I, I feel like sometimes it's hitting me like a ton of bricks and I got like six or seven things going on. Uh, like Hector was saying, and then sometimes I feel like I'm, I just, I'm, I'm just, there's nothing there, I, and and that's okay also, because sometimes you're not supposed to be fixing anything, you're not supposed to be sharing a message with the world, you're supposed to be looking inward and just a healing from something or shining a light on some dark spot in your in yourself. That's part of it too, you know. Nice pick, Mikey. Yeah, nice pick. All right, well, that's uh, the last comment, so we can be done here. And I will, uh, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Thanks very much for hanging out with me, as usual. And uh, if you're in the replay, once again, let me know that you're in the replay and do a hashtag or a comment of some kind. And Ray, you can have the booby prize today. How's that sound? Uh, thank you for uh, hanging out. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Have a wonderful day, night, whatever it is. And breathe.